Hello from downtown San Diego, California. This is the lair of my office, Mr. Scott Shepard. And here is my Antionet, my analog Zettelkasten, my mind in a box, as Nicholas Lumen would refer to it. And I'm in the midst of doing some Zettelkasten work, meaning some actual reading and writing and research and diving into some stuff. And I was planning on just doing this, but I thought it would be a good time to explain to you some of the things of how an analog Zettelkasten works. First things first, I want to show you something. This is a paper by Johannes F.K. Schmidt. I think he has written by far the best and most in-depth and accurate piece of material that goes into excruciating depth on Nicholas Lumen's Zettelkasten system. In English, well, in American English, we translate this to his note card box system. And as you may know, if you know me, I think the term Zettelkasten has been bastardized and sodomized and gutted out into something completely different. It's some type of digital rendition uh, comprised and composed and, I don't know, perpetuated. Starting off with uh, this bastard. Where is it? <laughs> Where is this book? Uh, How to Take Smart Notes, which is uh, brilliant because it's, well, I don't know, the binding is upside down. Anywho, um, anywho. Okay, so let's just jump into this. In Schmidt's paper, on page 302, he talks about, well, this card. And this is taken straight from Nicholas's, Nicholas Lumen's uh, Zettelkasten, his notebox. And the section that Johannes Schmitz writes about in referring to this card is this, section A. And let's go through it real quick. It says, we can distinguish three types of references. References in the context of a larger structural outline. Here, Lumen, when beginning a major line of thought, noted on a card several of the aspects to be addressed and marked them by a capital letter that referred to a card or a consecutive set of cards. So what he's talking about by the capital letters are these things right here. You see that? Boom. Right there, okay? And they're separate. I'm gonna show you that in a second, okay? Because I actually wrote it out by hand, okay? So it was numbered accordingly and placed at least in relative proximity, meaning uh, behind the other cards, okay? To the other card containing the outline. And this structure comes close to resembling the outline of an article or the table of contents of a book. Now, this is in black and white. This passage is quite verbose. It's academic, written by an academic, mainly for academics. And so what I have done and taken the liberty of doing, this is a while back, probably, I don't know, in the summer months. It is currently, we're ending the month of October. And thankfully, because my anti-net and Zettelkasten is appropriately, well, labeled, I was able to quickly grab and find this example of a Lumen note, you see? I found it by going to examples of Lumen's cards, if you see that, 4214 slash 2E slash 3. Okay, so when I navigated to 4214 slash 2E slash 3, I found that, well, oh, there is, precisely there, is the card, and it was actually, which one was it? It was this one, I believe. Whereas actually, actually, I believe it came right after this. Um, so... Yeah, it did. It's easy to find. So I was able to quickly find the uh, version of the cards that I basically wrote out by hand, okay? And what I did is I wrote out this card by hand, but I wrote out it in the translated English form. How I did that was I navigated to the online archive of Nicholas Lumen's Zettelkasten. And here's what you get. Here's what it actually looks like, a picture of it. So you see the capital letters, you know, uh, outlining the different 
you know, forms and all that stuff, right? And then I used Google Translate to automatically translate it into the English form. And then I wrote all of it out and even the capital letters, which I'm gonna show you in a second, I wrote them out by hand. So this is how it actually kind of looks, okay? So that's what it looks on the website. Now here's actually what it looks like in physical real world form. It looks like this, okay? So here is the first card. This card is the English uh, translation of Johann Schmidt's card, which can be found here. Or I mean, Johann Schmidt's example of Lumen's card that can be found here in his paper, okay? So here is the actual card. I wrote it out by hand. In the top right, you will see my ID, okay? You can ignore that. Here's Lumen's actual card and information. You can see that he wrote, a distinction must be made between A, and then A is actually a, it's almost like a relative path URL if you come from the world of uh, web design or web development. It's like, you know, basically just putting like a slash A behind the URL or whatever to, to tell you that this A, this little A, and this uh, capital D and capital B, A, C, they come after, okay? You see how there's the little A and then the D and B, right? And all that stuff, right? EA, you see, actually I have to, I think I have to rearrange some of this stuff. I don't know, whatever. Um, actually, no, that's what's weird is, uh, yeah, I actually do have to rearrange a little bit of it, whatever, it doesn't matter right now. Here's the thing. You can see that there are kind of like relative paths and this is how his brain worked, okay? So he came up with like this brilliant insight and wrote out this entire card. And then he was like, okay, I need to like break out and provide individual examples of every single one. So for instance, uh, let's take like B here, right? He's talking about uh, a distinguish distinction must be made between uh, the relationship, I'm, I'm under number two, the relationship between scientific organizational practice, scientific management, and the demands made by the ideology of the organization. And then there's a, a B afterwards. You see that? Well, what he was saying is that, okay, I will then elucidate and pull out that information and go into depth on it. And this is the card. You see the B right there, which is branched made off of his main ID, which is right there. So... He goes down under B and says, in this context, and he provides literature and what he was thinking of when he was talking about, you know, I guess finally a formal organizational objectives, ob objective values, stuff like that, right? So this entire thing right here is kind of like a thought stream. It's a stream of thought and insight that you have, okay? And then you go into depth on them in each of the following cards. Okay, so it's like it starts with the main one and then goes down as an outline. And then if you actually want to expand more upon it, like for instance, he has C right here, which is to know the ratio of ide ideologically designed world, right? So down here, when, when we go between uh, ideology, right, he's going into depth on, well, a quote from... Friar Sociology, page uh, 299 and the following pages, and then page 300, he actually writes out, and this is one of the many myths <laughs> propagated and created by uh, Sanke Arens and his book that Lumen never wrote down quotes. That's absolute horse shit. Another thing is the notion and the myth about, well, Lumen's cards only being one idea per card or one quote per card, right? Uh, that is also horse shit. Sorry, I'm the type of person that likes to use the word horse shit. I hope you're not offended by that. And if you are, well, you've probably stopped watching this video already because you can't not stand who I am and my personality. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to stay focused, okay, for once. So he actually wrote out, and I remember this because I painfully, painstakingly wrote out this entire freaking quote as well. He wrote out a quote, and by he, I mean Nicholas Lumen, that 
actually expands and goes on for like three freaking cards before it ends. Like there, that's where it ends right here. Okay. So this whole notion, like, like the Zettel, the Zettel Costin and how it's like taught today or like, I don't know, evangelized today is, is so far removed from how actually Nicholas Lumen built out his system and used it. Like he would not recognize what the hell Zettel Costin even is today if he Googled it. Okay. And that is just an example. Now I want to take you through a real world example of where I was just at a second ago and show you kind of how this works in practice. Okay, so here's a card that I was working on. And what I'm working on is basically taking my time to go through um, one, of, one of the people that, the individuals that owns and runs the main domain, azetocostin.de. Well, uh, I'm not going to go into that now. I'm just going to read this card to you, okay? So here's how it starts. It's quite ironic that the individual who owns zettelkosten.de objects to someone pointing out that the scholar who studied Nicholas Lumen's Zettelkosten closest, their little typo, whatever, right, which the study or the, the scholar who studied Nicholas Lumen's Zettelkosten closest, by the way, who I'm referring to is actually Johannes Schmidt. Well, Johannes, Johannes Schmidt actually said that no card IDs, meaning fixed IDs, you know, IDs like this that Lumen actually used, right? And this that can be branched and stemmed infinitely, infinitely inwardly, right? This scholar, Johannes Schmidt, said that it is an essential prerequisite for creativity. And this guy that owns zettelkosten.de has said that it's invalid because I'm using an appeal to authority and not a proper argument to explain why fixed IDs are so important. Well, that's fine, but I think it's kind of ironic that he is using that as, as saying that <laughs> what I've just said is invalid because, well, three things. And here are the three things. The entire premise of zettelkosten.de is based upon an appeal to authority. The second thing is that the usage of a quote-flavored authority bias is really one of the key tactics that is used by the individual who runs zettelkosten.de, and I intend to show you an example of that. And the third thing is that, well, a lot of the posts and some of the language and lingo seems to use and implant imagery of, or at least subconsciously, of a duckling following the leader, which is really in a key component of the appeal to authority bias that plagues us, right? So next to it, if you will notice, I did what Lumen did. I put, well, up here, I put, this is the main idea. It's a stream of consciousness or stream of thought that I've had, okay? This is the main stem. I call the stem A, and I put it in pencil because, and that's what Lumen did as well, because I don't really know where it's going to go yet in my anti-net, my analog Zettelkosten. I'm going to put it near the most similar idea and branch it and stem it off of that similar idea, which is why I ended it with an A, okay? Now, these sub-stems and these sub-leaves, you can call them, are something I intend to make into an actual thought and go into detail on them. So you can see there's A1 right there, there's A2, there's A3. And so just to show you, I have cards for A1, A2, and A3, and I intend to go into detail on all three of these things. Now, I've gone through the liberty of actually filling in, I'm just gonna throw this right here, okay? That's how I operate. Just throw note cards on the freaking ground because I'm a freaking rebel, all right? And I'm showing you then what I would do next is I would go and put as a title, right? There's A1, right? Zettel Costin D's entire purpose and uh, consulting business and software is founded upon the appeal to authority. And then I will go into detail on examples and show and reference them of how that is, well, what I believe. Same thing with the second one. 
Same thing with a third one. And then you can branch it over here and build out more examples. And the thing is, is that <laughs> a lot of the language that people use from the digital Zettelkasten world is like, oh, why would I confine myself to this type of work or like this, this type of thought? And yes, look at writing that out by hand is time consuming. It's painful, right? It's the slow way. It's the hard way. It's the old way. But when you do this, you are almost like neuro imprinting doing this into your mind because somehow, some way, it's like implanted into your mind, in your brain, and you take it wherever you go. And it's important to do this because by doing it the slow way, the hard way, it's counterintuitive, but it actually increases the chances of you actually using it and using this information like I'm actually doing right now because it took so long and it was time intensive that you carry it around with you in the asset that is way more important than a freaking computer, okay? And that is the brain inside of your own head, okay? In your own mind. And look, we have 1 billion neurons or 100 billion neurons in our head. And I know that because I wrote that down on a card the other day. And we have like, I don't know, 100 trillion connections between those neurons, okay? By using a computer and making things easy, you're basically wasting resources and the most important computer that was essentially evolved over 13.8 billion years, which lives inside one thing, your frickin' mind. And so I hope this has given you a little glimpse into what it's like actually working with an analog anti-net Zettelkasten system. It's not as if I'm a freaking Amish person and doesn't and do not use a computer. Look, here's my setup. I use both. But what I use and I find to be most important is to use the tool in your own freaking head. And you use that in communication with well, the second brain that you're building that goes inside of a box. And then because it's rigid and it is a rough structure, it creates and forms and builds its own unique personality that surprises you. This is why Lumen called it a surprise generator. All of this to say that, well, dear friend, if you're busy adjusting the theme of Obsidian or your workflow or any of that other horse shit, you're spinning your wheels and wasting your time. Spend less time on the frickin' forums of Zettelkasten or Rome Research and all that stupid drama and spend more time actually reading, writing things down, writing it out by hand, and doing it the old way, the hard way, the only way. All right, that is the end of my sermon today, and I hope that this at least helps one person. I'm going to go now, and I am going to go eat some vegan food, and I am not going to eat some ham since I recently bought a frickin' pig, and his name is Garth. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.